Hey everyone. So today I'm playing with these fun little Easter eggs. And I just always think this is so interesting every year when I paint Easter eggs that they're this unique shape. <laughs> Maybe is this just an aha for me? But um, they're not round. So when I go to draw them, I always want to just draw them round. And I'm like, wait, they're not round. They're kind of this oblong the fatter at the bottom, skinnier at the top. Anyways, okay, so maybe that's just me. Today I'm using, this is the Artisto paper that I tell you about a lot, the student grade. Such a great texture, you guys. Um, I'm always sharing them with you, and I've got my My Lang paints. Maybe one of these days I can paint in Windsor Newton every day, but to be honest, I love those, and I actually just even filled them up. I see I'm ready. I've got a couple more I've got to fill up with the my lane tubes love those that was actually a share from one of you guys that told me about those um so those are really great what i'm going to do the colors i want to use for this today let me get you my little swatch sheet i made are going to be some of these colors so some of these purples and greens i wanted them to look a little bit reminiscent of like a jelly bean and I'm going to use very wet and wet. So the colors in the My Lang palette are going to be the cad oranges, um, the cad yellow. I love their hookers greens, really gorgeous or emerald green. And then one of my favorite greens of theirs is this um, yellow green. I think it's beautiful and their tree greens beautiful. So kind of go towards the colors you want. You might want more like pastel colors, which is totally beautiful as well. But I'm going for the fresh purple, the violet red, the rose matter, because I love those. I think what I'll do afterwards as well is maybe go in with some pen and ink and draw in some flowers something like that. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I've got my two um, containers of water, one to wash, one to rinse, and I'm going to use pretty much my standard brush, which is my eight. Where is my eight? Let's see. Here it is. My eight round, and you know I love my Velvet Touch. Love the feel of it. That's just a me thing. Um, and I've had this brush for probably 10 years. And then I've always got its little companion, six long round, the Velvet Touch. Just because it's got a little bit more detail um, ability. So I love those two brushes. If you are using the Degados, well done, you guys. For the student, you get a whole set of these. And I've had these for a year and they're still doing great holding up. And honestly, if you really take care of your brushes, meaning you're not, you know, jamming the tips into your paints, um, your, after you're done with them, you're washing them really well and bringing them to a point, you're storing them laying down, not obviously with the, uh, tips or the toe pointed down and not even when they're wet storing them like this because the water will go down into the ferrule and you'll end up with well this brush is 25 years old but stuff like this see how it's loose my bristles are all crazy i just use this to dust off my papers now um this is a 30 year old brush, but that's the kind of things that'll happen if you get water in your, your brush. So just make sure you're either storing them like this after you've washed them to dry or, um, you know, laying them down. Okay, enough of that. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm also, I've got these MAB, the holographic series. I might use a little of that. So I went ahead and activated those with a tiny bit of water. And I've activated my, um, my Lang paints. So those are all nice and wet and waiting for me to use. Um, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to use the wet and wet technique. And I've just drawn these little bows. Um, you could even write words in the strings if you wanted to do something like that. Let me, I got my brush wet and it's pretty wet. Um, I'm going to, 
get the majority of my little, my first little egg here wet. I did leave a dry spot in the middle because I want there to feel like there's a little bit of shine there, like the light is hitting it. So there we go. I'm gonna go into my first color, which is of course my ultimate favorite. Look at that, yummy. I did read to the other day that, um, which totally made sense to me, seeing bright colors actually um, it gives you a hit of dopamine. Dopamine is like the happy hormone. I was like, of course, that's why I love these colors. But look how pretty. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go in with that. And I'm just dropping in some water here. Clean water. And I'm going to lay down. I'm going to let it dry for just a minute here. And then I'll go in with, um, actually, I'll go, just go in now. I'm going to go in with that violet red, which I love, one of my favorite colors, and start kind of dropping that in here. Just let that mix up a bit because I just love these colors together. Ooh, look at that. How Eastery is that? I guess we all have our different versions of Easter's. Some might be more of a pastel. Maybe I'll do a pastel egg for you guys. That could be pretty too. I, I actually really like these colors. So maybe we can do some spring green and some pinks and peaches. So there we go. Now I want to soften some of these edges a little bit. So I'm washing and rinsing my brush and just going in. I don't want that hard edge there. And then I'm going to let this, ooh, the watercolors kind of do their magic. Got this quite wet. And there we go. Look how gorgeous that is. Isn't it yummy? And then let's go ahead. I don't want to do this egg right now because that's right next to this one and it would just turn into a big blob, right? So let's go in here and just laying down our water. And I might have a few little puddles here and that's totally fine. Because this I'm really going for getting that the colors mixing together. And I'm going to use, let's see, I'm going to use that tree green. Ooh, look at that. So pretty, right? I just love, actually, I think Sorry, this isn't tree green. This is um, a, a yellow green. Using the side of my brush a bit there. There we go. So yummy, these colors. And I'm just going to lift my uh, paper up a bit. Again, I left some white spots, but I don't want those hard edges necessarily. So I'm just going in and dropping in some water in those. And then I'm gonna go in with, let's see, I want this color here, which is a bright turquoisey blue. And I always laugh when I use this color. Um, we had the biggest comments months ago because they called it turkey blue. They also have a beautiful sky blue. There's a cobalt blue. So all their colors are just yummy, yummy, yummy. Let's go in and let me see. Let me find that um, fresh blue, sky blue. Gosh, there's so many. So that's really pretty. Let's see. Let me see. Uh, let's try this one. Oops, I think that's the same one I just did. Let's try that one. That's a little bit greener blue. And this one. Ooh, that's that's it. All right. So I think that one's the turkey blue. Let's just throw a little of that in there. Ooh, boy, I got a lot on there. Now, did I pick up the wrong one? Hold on. See all these blues in the palette, they kind of look, nope, that's it, I think. Let's figure this out, guys. There we go, that's the one I want. Bingo! Okay, so I'm gonna go in 
and just tap in with that one. I really want these to be vibrant, although like I said, I think what I'll do is go in and maybe oh, do some um, pastel eggs too, because I think that could be really pretty. Now I'm gonna blow on this. Uh oh, looky there. Let's get that picked up right away. Now sometimes blue can be a little staining, but look at that. I got the majority of that up, so we're good. All right, now I'm gonna hit this with my dryer, my heat gun. You could use a um, <clears throat> hair dryer as well. But these are pretty cheap, to be honest. Now, because I used a yellow green, it's turning more of a green than that vibrant blue. But that's fine. There we go. I might just soak up a tiny bit of that. Let me grab a tissue. I'm multitasking here, guys. And there we go. And I can see it's getting lighter, so I know it's almost dry. And I don't even really care about that edge. I'm mostly worried about these inner edges so I can paint this one. This one's going to be that pop of orange and pad yellow, pad yellow, pad orange. Okay. So those heat guns work pretty quickly. And now let's go in and just wet to this one. There we go, just laying down that paint. I don't wanna to get too close to that edge because I have a feeling that vibrant blue may spread if I get too close. There we go. Okay, let's go in with our cat yellow first. There we go. I love these, I love purple and yellow together as complementary colors. I think they're so pretty. There we go. And now I'll go in with a tiny bit of that beautiful orange, just my cad orange. Mix that around a bit, kind of using the side of my brush here. and then dropping in water just to encourage to get this fun blend. There we go. And look at those fun colors, aren't they lovely? I kind of wish this had a little bit more of that bright blue. So what I might do the next time I ever paint these is go in first with that bright blue and then drop in the green and it might stay a little bit more um, bright blue for us. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a shot now with my heat gun. I keep saying this one of these days I'm probably gonna learn to edit so you don't have to listen to my dryer going. There we go. And I really wanted this to be washy to look like those eggs that you kind of dip in into the little cups. You remember those as a kid? And they would um, come out kind of washy and watercolory. I loved that. All right, let's grab these fun MAB metallics. I think I've pretty much got all of hers now. And I'm going to grab some of that and just go in and start laying that down. So fun, you guys. You know I love to add my watercolors, my uh, metallics to everything I can. I'm gonna smooth out some of those lines. There we go. So fun. Look at that. Love it, love it, love it. And 
Let's go in to maybe this one and let's let's play with the um, mirror series, which is what you saw me use for months and months back in um, during the holidays. And I actually kept it in my mind, you know, I can't wait till Easter because I'm going to be using these. I should have sprayed these first for sure. I really don't like scrubbing my brush in here, but there we go. Oh, I just love how these move. I think it's so, so pretty. They kind of, they always remind me of like molten lava. There we go. And you can see the beautiful way it blends. Oops, I just added green to that. I didn't wash my brush. And let's get some going up in there. Uh, let's try this one. Yeah, I really should have softened these up first because I don't like scrubbing around my brush. And let's add those metallics. <gasps> so pretty, look at, they're all sparkly, you guys. Okay, now I'm gonna go in, thank you MAB Metallics, I love you. Um, and let's use, I normally was always using my Micron pen, but they're kind of wearing out. So I have these Ohuhu fine liners and I really love them. This is the 0 0.7 and I'm gonna just turn my card sideways and let's add in our little bow. There we go. And a little string. Now I gotta wait on that one because it's still wet over there. So I'll just wait for that to dry. There we go. All right, how fun is that? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited, okay. The other thing I like to do is if I'm going to use a pen around my paintings, I like to have the pen kind of out of the lines and such. I just think that's kind of cool. So I don't need to follow the exact line. Now, I'm not sure if that's wet, so let's go to this one up here. There we go. So I kind of just make this line very organic. And go out of the lines, it just looks a little spontaneous. Oops, see, now I must have got some paint on there because it kind of, don't wanna ruin these, I love these. Okay, so there you go. Look how easy that was. Now you could go in here with some splatters, with all kinds of fun stuff, but this, I could make quite a few cards with this. So I really like this little technique and um, giving it that splash of uh, the pop of the metallics is really fun. I'm gonna, I hope I don't ruin this, but you know what? I feel like I wanna add more of that blue. Gosh, I don't know if I should, guys. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, I don't want to ruin this. I should just leave it alone. This is when, if you're ever questioning, like, should I do more? Should I do this? Probably walk away. That's kind of what I always say. And then the other thing you could do in here is you could add little flowers in here with your pen and ink. Um, I don't know if I exactly want to do that. I guess I could. You could draw on some little flowers. This is still wet. So don't want to go in there. But that's another thing. You could just stop right here. This is actually good enough. It's nice and simple. It's beautiful. But you could also go in and just draw in little daisies on here. Let's just play with that a minute. Oh, see, I can't do it because mine's wet. So that's a sign to me, don't do it. What I might do is just do another little short and I'll draw some little flowers on here and see what we think. But I hope you give this a try. I think this would be an easy way to um, create 
a, a few cards that wouldn't take you too long and just play and have fun. You could use different techniques, salt, you could sprinkle salt, you could do water droplets, um, splatters, maybe some um, saran wrap in here and just really have fun. All right, everybody, thanks for being here and playing with me. You guys are the best, and I just so appreciate your engagement and being here in my little community. All right, but I thought it might be fun to add in some pen and ink. I'm using the uh, Ohuhu Fine Line Drawing Pen, and this is, um, let's see, 0 0.7. It comes in a whole pack like this, which I really like them because it gives me a lot of different um, choices and it's fade proof, quick dry, which I really love. Um, so anyway, that's that marker. But I thought I'd embellish these just a little bit. It's absolutely great like this. Um, you could have maybe added some script into the little strings um, or if you're good at uh, calligraphy which I'm not you could write happy Easter or something like that but I thought I'd just uh, maybe do some little florals here that I'm going to draw in so I'm going to start with that this is kind of similar to my little bunny I did I just thought it would be fun to embellish because normally I can't leave well enough alone, as you know. And I did walk away from this and now I'm coming back. Now you may want to draw in some little guidelines so you don't get too wonky here. But I'm just playing at this point. Let's do one right here. When I don't have guidelines, this is kind of my technique, is I just do this and then that way it gives me, I, it kind of ensures that I'm getting all my lines in the right direction. So there you go, kind of fun. Maybe do some little circles. So there's that one. Let's see, what could we do in this one here? How about if we do um, some little leaves? I think that might be fun. Make sure you're making them all different, different sizes. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can see. So I actually lately, I've been really enjoying embellishing my paintings with some of these pen and ink type of things. I think it's really fun. Been kind of getting into that. So there you go. Just plain. Just adding some interesting elements. You could really do polka dots. You could do anything you want. Like here, let's do some polka dots. Those are always fun and kind of simple. Everything doesn't need to be extravagant. So just have fun with this process. Could do squiggles. So there you go. I think that's kind of fun. And just another little idea to add on if you really wanted to. All right, I think that's it. I hope you enjoy this and um, this gives you just another little option to play with. All right, everybody, thanks. Have fun, happy painting.